My husband got stuck in the storm inside his ex-wife's house three months ago. Later I find out she's three months pregnant via Facebook. I have no idea why I keep suspecting it might be my husband's. Context. Three months ago, my husband, 37, was stranded at his ex-home wives when dropping off their seven-year-old kid due to terrible weather. He was unable to drive and had to spend the night there. It wasn't a huge issue, even though it was the first time he'd spent the night at his ex's house in our three years of marriage. I just saw in his ex-statement wives on Facebook that she was expecting her third child, and she continued referring to the baby as her son's brother-slash-sister without adding half, which may be meaningless since many people don't pay attention to such details. So I can see why she refers to her stepsister as sister. But to be honest, it was the time that worried me. I did the arithmetic and couldn't help but think about the chance that the baby was my husband's. My husband was behaving normally, which caused me to hold my tongue and keep my concerns to myself. But when his ex-wife began seeking to phone and meet often, I had to bring it up with him openly given how uncomfortable her conduct had previously made me. He didn't take it well at first, saying he wasn't having this talked since it was too off the beaten path, and then explaining that he no longer had emotions for his ex after she cheated on him. And he said that if he had known what he knows now, he would not have had a kid, his son, with her in the first place. He called me insane for even implying there's a possibility. The kid is his and pretended to be wounded for days because I accused him of something he'd never do and argued. It wasn't his fault the terrible weather prevented him from returning home and forced him to spend the night at his ex's place. He stated he wanted to go wait at the gas station, but his son insisted on his staying. So he slept in his room and departed first thing in morning. As I have said, it is the time that irritates me. In addition to her efforts to get close to him, such as frequent visits for private chats that my husband refuses to share with me. She was informed she didn't want a divorce and wanted to work things out, but my spouse couldn't. He despised her. When I informed my stepson about that night, he gave me a significantly different account. He said that his father left the room twice for extended amounts of time. I attempted to get him to be more particular and recall how long he had been out of the room. He said he didn't know since he fell asleep immediately after his father left the room for the second time. I was irritated. I truly want to quit dragging and dropping this in my head, but something is stopping me. I've been battling to find some peace of mind since my ex revealed her pregnancy, and I'm not sure why I have such a strong sensation that something is wrong. I can't speak to her since she's cruel and despises me so. I can only image how she'd respond to anything I tell her. I'm not sure whether she and her current partner were trying for a kid. They haven't been together long and didn't seem serious to me. My sister said that I had the right to be uncomfortable about this. I want to get this out of my brain and go on with my life, but my spouse refuses to talk about how I'm feeling. Much alone attempt to reassure me about my anxieties. I felt I could obtain some fresh eyes from a third party. Story 2. Beyoncé said her ex was the love of her life. Your update. My fiancé female 31, and I male 33, got engaged last October after being in a relationship for five years. Everything has been wonderful, and I can honestly say that I've never encountered someone that compares to her. She is without a doubt the joy of my life. I've known her for most of my life. We grew up on the same street, just around the corner. Her mother and father still live in the same home and I still live in the house I grew up in, which my mother gave to me when she died in 2014. We haven't formally moved in together yet, but for all intents and purposes, she is. Her parents are quite near to her, and she still has her bedroom there, where she may sometimes spend the night, but she is never away from here. Anyway, this morning, I decided to go take a trip down to the shops to get some items, and on halfway down, a 15-minute walk, I realized I had forgotten my face mask. Masks are necessary in stores here since July 10th, so I had to return back and grab mine. When I stepped in the door to get the mask from the kitchen table, I heard her on the phone in the living room, and she said, Yes, but David will always be the love of my life. David is her ex-boyfriend. I don't know much about him, but I do know they were in a relationship for two years before we began dating, and it ended a year before we met. In addition, he dumped her. I simply grabbed my mask and headed back out and as soon as I got to the shops, I started feeling strange and I had to sit down because my mind was racing in a million different places. I finally arrived home and told her I was unwell and sent her back to her parents' place, since I didn't want her there while I was sick. To be honest, I'm presently laying in my bed, unsure of what to do. I know she didn't do anything wrong. 
She didn't cheat on me or go out of her way to upset me, but what's heard can't be unheard. She essentially said that the guy she has consented to marry isn't a match for an ex she hasn't seen in six years. The fact that she said that he would always be her love indicates that it's an empty game. Her heart has already been captured, and there's nothing I can do to reverse that. What would happen if he reappeared in her life? You can't say no to the love of your life when they come knocking, and I'd be discarded faster than yesterday's leftovers. So, what should I do? Tell her I was listening in on her and overheard her say that? Just terminate the relationship with no apparent reason, such as, well, it's not you, it's me, and so on. Is it okay if I swallow my pride and pretend I didn't hear it? Everything has been amazing, but there is no way on earth I would want to be someone's second option particularly when her ex is the one on her mind who she would undoubtedly be with if she could. I'm considering just stating that it isn't working between us. She's already messaging me about coming over tonight to mother and pamper me since I'm the sickie. Update 1. I was going to tell her to come back around on Thursday night so we could chat, but I decided to wait until Friday morning instead since I needed to clear my thoughts. She still assumed I was sick, so I needed some time to plan out what I was going to say. So she comes over on Friday morning around 8 a.m. with rolls and tuna mayo crunch that her mother had cooked for me, as well as grapes, candies, juice, and other goodies. I guess she could tell something was wrong. Immediately away since I must have appeared stony-faced and the mood could be sliced with a knife. Anyway, I told her that I wasn't really ill and that I left my mask on my way to the store yesterday and had to come back to get it, and when I came in to grab it, I heard her chatting in the other room. About David. I instantly stopped talking and glanced at her as her face became absolutely pale and she began to tear up. She then goes into the toilet, closes the door, and begins screaming violently, and alarm bells start ringing off all over my mind. Her reply made me assume she wasn't aware of what I heard, so she must have said something else about him as well. I rapped on the door and told her that if she wants to save this relationship, she needed to tell me everything right now. After about 30 minutes, she emerges, wiping her face with a tissue and tells me David contacted her four or five months ago, and she has been sleeping with him once or twice a week since. As I said in my last piece, she will see her parents on occasion, generally once a week, sometimes twice, and sometimes not at all. The issue is, I've simply dropped by dozens of times over the years to chat to her mother or father, watch television, or do anything else without notifying her, and she's always been there, so it's just become usual, and I've never thought about it again. This has clearly been the case when she has gone to see David. All I can think of is that the fragment of chat I overheard her having was her friend or somebody assisting her in making a decision between David and myself. When I heard this, I kicked her out, took handfuls of her belongings, placed them in trash bags, and hurled them out the front door into the front lawn. She's still standing there, by the way. I then got my garden hose and doused the bags with it. I'm not proud of that. It was really petty and, in retrospect, I should never have done that. She has now run around to her home, and her father appears about a minute later yelling. Her father and I end up arguing in the now quagmire-like front lawn at about 9 a.m. police vehicles and everything else showed there, and half the street was closed due to the rammy. Following that, I blocked her on everything and went to my friend's place, where the three of us spent the weekend and Monday. They took off work, I'm on furlough partying. When I returned to the home this morning, I saw she had returned at some point, Made the beds, done the laundry, and ironed. I'm not sure why she did this. She's attempted to come in again as I write this. I haven't been able to replace the locks yet, so I placed door chains on the front and back doors, and I heard the door opening and the chains clanging as she tried to get in from above. There's also a message she's slipped through the door. I don't want to read it right now because I'm too upset, hungry, and hungover to really consider what she has to say. Update 2. Things have taken a turn for the worst after all that has occurred. I wrote an email to her father explaining my side of the story and apologizing for making things public and humiliating his daughter, as many of you suggested I do, but as I previously said, I acted immediately. I didn't apologize for fighting him since I was responding to his attacking me. He essentially urged me to get out of there and accused me of biting his ear for some reason. That's what was getting caught in my teeth. Of course, I'm joking. If you don't laugh, you'll weep. I walked outside about a week ago to discover my vehicle key smashed all the way down from the passenger side wing mirror to the trunk. Last Sunday, when I was heading down the road to meet a buddy at the Arches, a site where we periodically hang out and stroll from an arched bridge, a local mouth, gossip, labeled me a shame. 
I asked how I was a shame, and she claimed I was a disgrace for beating up my ex-fiancé. To be clear, I've never touched her in my life. Either she, her father, or... Someone else is maintaining this falsehood, and my kicking her out, and hosing it has certainly given it credibility. I haven't talked to my ex in a long time, and she hasn't attempted to contact me. I believe they're all convinced that I'm the evil person now. I've started the process of listing my home for sale since I can't live here any longer. I wish I still had my mother to depend on because she would make everything better. Final update. I'm still living in my home, but instead of selling it, I'm going to rent it out. I can't give up something that belonged to my mother and has been passed down through the family for centuries. I've since spoken with the father, and I understand why the family circled the wagons, but throwing me under the bus so brutally was honestly ridiculous. Collateral damage to me and my reputation, apparently. I've only known them for my whole life. Overall, I feel like I'm in the middle of a shower that has altered course. I'm still suffering, but I'm feeling a lot better now that I've got an umbrella and a plan. I'd also want to point out that I shared my side of the story on social media. It's debatable whether it was correct or not, but it was after I had allowed others close to me quietly distributed first, so I believe the timing was appropriate. Her side is still singing from the same hymn book, but I'm hoping neutrals will view things from my perspective. My close friends have been amazing throughout this ordeal, but that's why they're close friends, I suppose. Anyway, best wishes, another minor update. It's been almost a year since I moved out of my home and am now renting it to a wonderful older couple, so I thought I'd provide an update. I'm doing well, and I've even found myself a girlfriend. Wish me luck. What have I discovered? Life hit me hard, but I fought back and for the first time in a long time, I'm excited about the future. Isn't it true that we only have one life? Spending it with someone who would treat me as though I were garbage.